again. We are here just shortly before the start of the last evening of Artmania. It started to rain and we can stop. And I am sitting here with Einar from Vardruna and many of you know him from several other projects, but it's Vardruna. Uh, Vardruna is the topic of tonight. So how are you doing? You doing very, uh, very well, thank you. Um, yeah, feels, feels great to be back in, uh, in Romania and also back here in Sibiu. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful city and we're really excited about um, yeah, the, the, the concert. And, uh, yeah, we don't mind the rain. Uh, as, uh, as I was telling you earlier, uh, throughout the city there are many things related to Norway and to Norwegian culture. Um, it's basically the thing you're working on in this project of yours as well. Uh, what is to you the most important aspect of Norwegian culture, the one you want to point out through your work in Gardruna? Well, uh, I would say, I would say it's things well, things that are universal and timeless that I I do in my di dialect, in a way, in the Nordic dialect, yeah. because it's a dialect of the same thing. Uh, if you go far enough back in time, you see it's the exact same mechanisms that gave birth to the traditions we are singing about in our music. And, and, uh, and for me, you know, I... A lot of people think that I'm really into Viking Age and all of that, but I'm, I'm really not. Uh, for me, it's more important the things that came way before that. Uh, and, and for me, this is more about animistic traditions. Um, so, what the most important thing is in an animistic tradition is, I would say, very simple. Uh, and it's not a very... Uh, you know, uh, it's not a, it doesn't have to be a spiritual thing or a religious thing at all. You know, it's an attitude. The, this idea that nature is sacred, nature is sacred, uh, and, and you know, just implementing that that uh, idea or thought or concept. That's what we need to teach our children. You know, and and the rings that that will create. It's, it's, very simple, but the consequences would be uh, uh, profound. So, if my music does have a message, or, or if, if the traditions I, I sing about do have a message, I would say that is the message. It, it reminds us of a time when when we were more part of nature, not just the rulers of it. Um, so, yeah. You are speaking exactly about nature, about an attitude. Uh, on one hand, you have kind of when you you are dealing with European audiences, you have this language barrier because people don't understand. It's difficult, but we see that uh, people are more and more drawn to this type of music and to this type of cultural endeavor. I'd say. Yeah. From your experience with people around the world, uh, do they just come to see you as an maybe, maybe exotic, maybe you know? Uh, weird and beautiful type of thing or did you experience people really understanding the deeper meaning of what you are trying to convey? Well, of course it is both, but it is definitely my impression that a lot of our listeners um, are connected to it on a very personal level uh, and when you do that, when you do come, uh, um, get in deeper uh, and more personal contact with, with an art form or, or music in this case, um, of course you're going to dig deeper and and the music is going to dig deeper into you as well, so it becomes a, uh, a synergy uh, in a sense. So, um, But yeah, for, for some people it's the unspoken. Uh, the music, uh, very often people tell me that that uh, when they listen to uh, the music for the first time, it's like they are um, they are recognizing, remembering something they didn't know they had forgotten, in a way. And that's um, it's a pretty beautiful way of putting it, in a way. Um, uh, that makes me very humble when I hear people say things like that. 
Um, so I, I think it's both, you know, the people who are really into the cultural part and uh, the philosophy and want to study it and, and sort of part of their own personal journey, but also people who are just being touched by music, you know, and, and yeah, Bo both, both are just uh, as, as, as good. There is this uh, coincidence which some may find strange, this very big interest in traditional ways and traditional culture coming from black metal artists or former black metal artists because you had Gal playing with you for so long, you yourself played black metal and it's not only this, you know even from the 90s we had Satir from Satiricon doing his Von Graven project and on one hand when black metal appeared uh, starting with, I don't know, Mayhem, it was something very iconoclastic and it seemed very far away from anything connected to tradition. So what, why do you think there is this, uh, this common ground black metal has with rediscovering old northern traditions and ways of life? Well, I, I think then you have to, uh, I think there were different pathways within the black metal scene also. Uh, for some people it was a more nihilistic, uh, uh, misanthropic uh, uh, or philosophical kind of pathway and for some it was resistance it was against religion uh, it was and, and and for many people it uh, yeah, I, w I would say it's, it, it was also very common that a lot, uh, a lot of bands from that time drew their inspiration from from um, uh, our old traditions, both both the traditional music and the tonality uh, of, of the traditional music, uh, but also our folklore, our mythologies. Um, uh, so I don't know. You know, nature uh, creates culture. That's the premise of culture. You know, uh, if you go far enough back in time. It's the nature, the surroundings, the resources. Uh, Etc. That is what shapes uh, a culture and a tradition. And of course, the Norwegian tradition is is shaped by no, uh, the, the um, Norwegian nature, uh, and that's pretty grim stuff. So even you hear it in our, our traditional music as well. That it's very melancholic. It can be quite dark uh, for for other people. We don't see it as dark at all. Uh, so. I do think there are many similarities, and I do think there is a logic behind also using using this in in that black metal movement. Uh, but but yeah, some did, some did, some uh, drew their inspiration from other things, from a more uh, yeah, from a different place. But today, when you're so into this project, would you say that some type of black metal at least still appeals to you? Would you play? Would you consider approaching things from this side as well? Oh, no, personally, I, I was done with metal uh, in my teenage, late teenage. That, then I was sort of, I, it was out of my system in a way. I can appreciate it still, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. but more from a, 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 like a What's the word? Um, yeah, more like a, a looking back. Yeah. Uh, like a retrospective. Ro yeah, or, romanticizing. Yeah, the, nostalgia. Uh, nostalgia yeah. was the word I was looking for. Okay. Um, so, uh, but um, but on a personal level, like when I played in Gorgoroth, uh, even then I was sort of done with it. It was out of my system. That was it was for me. It was art. It was. Work. It was, uh, yeah, being part of an art, artistic uh, movement and expression. Uh, yeah, becoming one with that. But on a personal level, it, it had nothing to do with me. Uh, so I, I sort of found my my way of, of connecting to it, and, and that was as a as a as an expression. Um, so so I guess the need to do something that was more in line with my my own personal passion and where I was in, in my life at that point uh, it became more and more important so first then uh, yeah then I switched 
as, uh, as we were saying earlier, I, I had some people who saw you already on this tour. I saw you myself years ago in 2019, and it was already a very, uh, let's say, uh, a, a very full experience. And now people say that uh, this show is really special, this, this uh, ring of shows. So, what did you bring in new? No, it's it, you know we've been ever since the first concert. It's it's not like we've changed much. It's, it's every time. I feel almost every show we're sort of just tweaking it a bit deeper into yeah, it. Yeah, in a way, and, and we're building stone by stone. And it's not a circus. It's still us on stage. Yeah. It's still the music I want to have the fullest focus. Uh, that interaction. I don't. Need explosions and, no, 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 and no, all of that. Not kiss. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. And, and uh, so we're, we're trying to keep it down to down to earth, uh, clean, but also have these these um, subtle things to to make the experience more more uh, yeah more more um, yeah br bring you closer into it as as uh, as the receiver as well. Yeah, because you are saying you are saying that nature is so important in this uh, animistic, let's say, worldview, and well, nature is perceived from the senses. So, do you think about about uh, did you ever think about having maybe a show appealing to even more senses than just the sight and the hearing, maybe the smells or things like that? Or? Of, of of course, the the, the limits are <laughs> there. There are no limits yeah. to to how far you can pull that, and uh, of course, but. On the other hand, we are really blessed and honored to to, to um, we're in a position where we we get to play a lot of really special places uh, and playing under the open sky or in a in a in a setting of, of uh, yeah that somehow has a has relevance to the music we're portraying um, or giving voice to you know that. that the, the the potential is so big, you know, for for creating a positive synergy effect where two plus two becomes six. Six, yeah. Um, when 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 the music and, and the, the space is is uh, uh, complementing each other, uh, so um, so I, I feel we're already very lucky in that sense. So it's just it's about claiming that space. It's become. It's about yeah being very present. Uh, every every night is different. Every audience is different. I'm different every night and, and um, yeah. So well, thank you very much, and uh, looking forward to seeing these words transposed on stage. Yes. Uh, thank you. Same here. Thank you.